With over 25,000 students worldwide, School of Rock is taking music education to the next level and having a blast doing it. The global franchise brand has established itself as a trailblazer in the world of performance-based music education. With over 200 schools spanning 10 countries, School of Rock pairs a unique approach to instruction with a bona fide love of rock music to help young, aspiring musicians find themselves, hone their talents, and build the confidence they need in their lives. For a music-loving entrepreneur, the rewards go far beyond financial. Franchise Direct wanted to see what all the fun was about. So we paid a visit to Carmel, Indiana. Well, I've been in Indianapolis for about 20 years. And my background is I'm a finance guy, worked in a lot of uh, Fortune 500 companies, most recently as CFO at Delta Fawcett here in Indianapolis. And now I'm an executive coach and I have three children. My daughter Elise is in the business here in the franchise as an owner. And uh, my daughter and I run the business together. So my executive coaching now is, is coaching my daughter to run a franchise. And she doesn't have a business background. She comes from a writing major background, but she connects with these kids and she's doing a great job. So I grew up in this area. I went to Carmel High School. And one of the things that made me really interested in School of Rock is I know how big these schools are, how easy it can be to get lost in the shuffle. If you're not plugged into something at school, um, it, can be, it can be difficult to find your place and to, to make friends and really find what you're passionate about. So one of the things that I fell in love with about School of Rock is that it gives uh, kids a place to come and feel connected, to have a community here and have it feel like a smaller space where they can uh, meet kids with similar interests um, and feel like they can be themselves here. I would love for 20, 30 years from now, somebody in Indianapolis says, you know, something changed in the music scene in Indianapolis. And if they traced it back, it'll be when we started the School of Rock, because all the kids we're developing, they're not gonna be satisfied with just going to a restaurant and not having live music. Mm -hmm. They're gonna wanna play, and they're gonna go to places that have live music. So I'm developing their next level of bands, I'm developing the next level of consumers for live music. And I'd love to see Indianapolis become a hotbed for artists. Maybe. Yeah. No, I'm not! Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Tuesday Rock 101. We are the Flaming Wolves, and first we are going to be doing Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley and his comments. The thing that distinguishes School of Rock, not just for me, but for all the people who are involved in it, is that it's a business really built on passion. It's a business built on uh, answering the question, what are we on this earth to do? And many of our franchisees, many of our staff members, and certainly the corporate staff, are really motivated by changing the world one student at a time and spreading the love and the joy of music, but also the life skills that come along with it. I subscribe to a lot of business magazines, and I happen to be an ad in a business magazine. And it's very unique, so it's something I looked at and thought, wow, that was really cool. I wish we'd have been around when I was young, because I would have loved to have done something like that. Probably took me six to seven months just to digest whether or not I wanted to step into a franchise. But then once I got interested and got the courage to make the call, I sent a, a web request into the School of Rock website and their VP of Franchise gave me a call and we just talked about what I was looking for, what it does, and their first step was recommending connecting with some other franchise owners. So my daughter and I, Elise, went up to Chicago and visited five owners and we loved what we saw. We loved the stories we heard about not only great rock and roll music, but also the life change and the impact we have for some of these kids. Then what we do is, as soon as possible, get you talking to other franchisees give you the opportunity to learn from their experience and say, not only is this a business opportunity I love, is this a concept I love, but is this my tribe? Are these the people with whom I want to spend, um, you know, a decade or more of my career? Once I started down that process, meeting owners, meeting with the leadership, it probably took me six to seven months and they're with you every step in the way, helping you locate a location, and putting together the whole plan to launch this business, which is important for me because I've never launched a business. It's certainly you want to see folks who've had a track record of success in building businesses, 
uh, having impact either in their community or in the workplace. But the most distinguishing factor that makes for a successful franchisee at School of Rock is their passion for the mission. That they're joining a crusade, they're not just joining a franchise. That they have a real deep and abiding interest in transforming the lives of our students, and certainly that's through music. They don't need to be professional musicians. They don't even need to necessarily be good at music, although many of our franchisees are absolutely amazing musicians. But what they have to have is an abiding and deep love for music and its impact in the world. One of the first things that'll happen when you contact the franchise is they're gonna send you a, a franchise disclosure agreement. And so that has the broad range of what it takes to launch a School of Rock franchise. And they're all a little different depending on what type of facility that you find that you may have to do some retro. So for me, it was about 250,000 to launch a franchise. So that's the, the upfront investment. And most of that for School of Rock is setting up a cool environment for the kids and soundproofing because you're turning kids loose with drums. One thing I noted from talking to my banker was when you have backing of a franchisor behind you, rather than just a guy that wants to open a music school, they're much more open to talking about lending you money. So I actually looked at four different options, or maybe many more, but one is, do you have your own resources that you can invest? Uh, I also looked at traditional bank financing. Uh, another option was to use home equity line of credit. The two I ended up with was, uh, one was a little less traditional and that's using my 401k to invest in uh, this franchise. So I have a self-directed 401k that owns the stock in my franchise. And then the other piece was an SBA loan. And I come from a business background where we live that if you get the culture right, the mission right, the numbers take care of themselves. So that's what we focus on here. And that's the mission of School of Rock. If kids love what they're doing here and they're inspired, they're gonna tell all their friends. The numbers take care of themselves. A typical day for me, I get up, um, I try to go for a walk or a run if it's nice out, try to get some exercise in, do some errands at home and then leave the house about noon, get here about 12.30 or one, and that's when the day starts. Uh, it's quiet here between one to three or four o'clock, and that's really when we can get the majority of our things done on our to-do list. And from about four o'clock on, it's just uh, busy, busy, busy. So kids in and out, parents in and out, the phone's ringing, uh, teachers are in, and that's when it gets really exciting around here. That's when it, the energy builds. We have about 100 kids in and out um, each day at the Carmel location. The kids come in all excited to be here, and, uh, and it doesn't really stop until about 9 o'clock when we head out the door at the end of the night. Ever since I was six, my passion was to play guitar. Well, I took guitar lessons myself when I was younger, probably about his age, probably about nine years old and I found them to be pretty dry, pretty boring. Not quite the passion for the music that I really felt myself, and so I sort of washed out of, of lessons of music. My passion never left music, uh, and then we found, then he started following along, loving every time we get in the car, gotta turn the radio on, gotta have music, gotta have the iPod on, gotta have music going at all times, and we thought, Let's let's see what this can do. A lot of parents when they walk in the door are a lot like me and my dad when we first found out about School of Rock. They walk in and are just blown away by the program and say, I wish something like this would have been around when I was younger. That's how a lot of parents kind of react to seeing the whole program is kind of reevaluating their own uh, traditional maybe music lesson background uh, and they get excited about this and that it's different. And it's exciting for them to think about their kids being part of something that's so neat um, and that will really encourage your kids to grow as musicians and as people. I happened to run across a drum set, put it in our basement. One day he's downstairs just hammering out a perfect tempo. And we thought, let's look into alternatives. We looked at the dry lessons like I took and found the School of Rock and realized that it was a totally different atmosphere, a totally different beast, if you will. That they had the lessons, followed by the actual placement into a band with in-house uh, kids. 
also taking lessons with the same desires. My plans are um, to grow up and be a really good guitar player and um, like do just follow my passion. One of the neat things about School of Rock is the social aspect. It's a place where they can come and uh, feel like they can be known and fit in with other kids. They can also express themselves creatively through music. They get to perform on stage. Um, so even just in that aspect, getting up on stage and getting to uh, express themselves is something that's really exciting for them and their parents to really uh, give them a chance to shine. That's where their moment is, that they get to get up on stage and show off who they really are, which is a great creative expression for them. Being here, it's unlocked my personality for sure. I don't think before I would have came here, I would have talked to anybody. It's made me want to study school more because I can come here afterwards as kind of a reward type thing. So it's, it's really nice. We are really picky about who we bring on to teach at School of Rock. We are not only looking for musicians who are great at playing guitar or singing or playing bass or the drums, whatever it is they do, we're also looking for instructors who can translate their passion to the kids. I've been in a band called the John Spencer Blues Explosion. I co-founded that band. We've toured all over the world. That's what I've been doing pretty much over, you know, more than half my life. Well, I've been here a little over a year. I teach drums and guitar, and it's incredibly rewarding. You see how, how interested they are. You see how excited they are when they do it well. You see how uh, sort of dedicated they are in responding to, to what I'm asking them to do, to what, what they're expected of. I'm so excited for them to see them being so interested in it and seeing them feeling so fulfilled. The teaching method here, it's very playing based, you know, like most places you have a recital once a year and that's it. Whereas here we're playing six gigs a year, if not more, if you're in the house band program, you get to do the summer camps. We travel up to Summerfest every year and we play an actual music festival, one of the world's largest. It's incredible. All of our teachers are amazing. They're qualified. They go on tours all the time. They're in active bands. It's absolutely amazing. It's a good representation for the school to see that they not only have teachers who can teach and who are interested in teaching, but are also professionals in the field. As far as marketing goes, we try to do a mix of digital marketing and then also some guerrilla marketing things. So in terms of digital marketing, we do some Facebook and Instagram ads. We also advertise locally in a local newspaper. Uh, we've done a few direct mail pieces, postcards, especially for summer camps and things like that. But then some of the fun stuff that we do for our guerrilla marketing is we are involved in a 4th of July parade every summer that goes right past our location here and about 10,000 people come to this parade and we uh, have the kids set up in a float and they perform and we're always dressed up as well, um, passing out candy. So we'll have uh, my dad and the other staff will be dressed up as Kiss. That's what we've done for a few years. Um, I've dressed up as Madonna. My brother and I were Axl Rose and Slash one year and that was really fun. So we try to do some things that are different and fun and it's really neat to see the kids' faces as we walk by and pass out candy and hear the music. Uh, they just really get to see what School of Rock is about. And that's actually a great marketing tactic for us. Our growth has been very rapid. We're at uh, two, over 200 schools right now. We're growing at double digits, uh, both uh, in, in terms of domestic and international growth. Uh, we have a lot of interest. Um, we're in 10 markets right now uh, around the world, and we're seeing very, very strong interest throughout the world. Well, I come from a family with many musicians, and, but it's true, my, my beginnings were more like classical oriented, so I'm really happy now to, to be able to participate in this uh, project of building a school of rock. We, we have been lucky to, to have music in our lives since we were a kid, so we really know how important is music into, into life, so it's great to give music early to, to kids, you know, and we know that rock and roll, it's also uh, the, the best game to get introduced into music, so we think we are gonna rock it in Lima with School of Rock, definitely.
It's a universal concept. It's a concept that applies in almost every community and almost every place around the world, because music is a universal love. Well, it wasn't planned originally to, that we were going to go into business together. I just had the idea of checking out School of Rock, and Elise and her husband happened to be interested because it's a cool idea. Working for my dad is a lot of fun. He has been in the business world a long time. Um, it's been neat. Uh, just to kind of get a chance to work with him up close and see exactly why he's been so successful all these years. Um, all the knowledge and wisdom that he's gotten from different experiences he's had is just incredible. So it's really neat to learn from him and to have him really coach us along um, in, in building this amazing business. The training opportunities at, at School of Rock are really continuous, uh, and some formal, some informal. Uh, we, of course, expect folks to come in with a lot of uh, business skills and uh, capabilities and interesting backgrounds. So they come equipped with a lot of information. But, of course, we do initial training for our franchisees to teach them the mechanics of running the business, uh, what's the special sauce. We have an operations and marketing and IT team there to share best practices with our franchisees, and there's a lot of resources available in our intranet. We have monthly calls, not just one, but four monthly calls that we do with our franchisees for ongoing learning. And this will include a system-wide update, we'll have a operations call, we'll have a uh, music call, uh, and we'll have marketing calls, just so franchisees can keep current with what the best practices are. The support network of School of Rock as fellow franchisees is really incredible. Um, there's a group online where we can ask questions, um, start discussions, and we love contacting other schools and seeing what they're doing well, what's working for them. So we're on the phone a lot talking to different School of Rock locations and just kind of picking their brain and seeing what works in their market. So we had a large group of seniors graduate last year, and every single one of them is studying music in college, which is so neat to us. It's just another sign that School of Rock is so instrumental in these kids' lives, uh, and it was such a great time for them to spend their school years here preparing for college to be at School of Rock. We're very focused on growth at the individual school level providing really strong return on investment, return on effort, return on time for existing franchisees. And my belief is that a strong franchise concept has to be growing from the core. Uh, we've been in the business six years, coming up on our six year anniversary. We have about 200 students in this school. About four years in, uh, we were enjoying this, growing, and so we opened a second franchise about a half hour away from here. It's been open a year and a half, and we have 100 students in Fishers. I would highly recommend taking a look at this franchise. I think it's unique because it's not just a business investment. There is an investment, there is a return financially, but just as big, it could become a family business, and it's also a huge, rewarding business. Stories like Steve and Elise's are what franchise ownership is all about. The sweet sound of entrepreneurial success awaits. Whether you want to be front and center, or if you prefer to run the show behind the scenes, there's a franchise opportunity waiting for you. Visit FranchiseDirect.com or contact School of Rock Franchising online at Franchising.SchoolofRock.com or by calling 877-556-6184.